SEC chair now takes unexpected stance against hedge funds. That is right. Gary Gensler is fighting against hedge funds who are fighting against the transparency rules for short selling. Gary Gensler actually brought up GameStop. He said, remember the events around GameStop nearly three years ago? And when he brought up the GameStop point, there was actually laughing in the background. And he said, no, seriously, listen, we have transparency on the long side, but not the short side. We have a lot of transparency in the long side, but let's add transparency to the short side. He says in quotes that transparency helps our capital markets, lowers cost of capital, and raises returns for investors. And during the meeting, what came up is that hedge funds say transparency is bad. They say that it discourages short selling. Why would transparency discourage short selling if there was nothing to hide? What is going on guys? Lottery Socks here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Today we have a lot of stuff to cover with AMC, GameStop, as well as the overall market and some additional stuff. I'm sorry I missed an upload yesterday. I did post about it. I needed a day off to say the least, but right now I'm back at it with you guys and I'm going to give you everything that I can in this video without making it extremely long. And the next thing we are going to be touching on is the first half of FTDs for November of 2023. So without further ado, all I ask, of course, is to hit the like button. It's free. It helps me out. Subscribe to the channel. We have about one week of trading left before 2023 is done, and it's going to be an exciting week. Let's get into the video. So AMC FTDs came out for the first half of November, and you can see that it looks pretty low. It looks pretty bad. But again, this is after the reverse split. Here are the actual numbers coming up to an FTD change of 540,072. So there are quite a bit of fails to deliver. So there are quite a bit of FTDs that were being reported all the way up to November 2024. Now, whether this is a single day or whether it's stacked, it's still a ton of failed to delivers, which I do believe it is stacked. Previously, October 27th, you saw 150,000 and October 11th, 213,000. We are more than double those numbers. With that being said, where AMC is trading at right now, you will have to see some sort of covering, at least in a fair market, with those FTDs. Is that going to happen? Before we get an AMC's chart, I want to cover the Ortex data. 8.52% short interest to close out the week. Again, we know it's plenty, plenty over this, but Ortex is what we have to pay attention to right now. Now, AMC also last week had an order imbalance of 390 1,585 shares on the buy side, which means they could not match sellers. And there is also a whale that purchased GameStop. And it's interesting that they purchased it at these levels. And before we get into that, let's touch on AMC's chart. Now, obviously, we didn't want AMC to break to the downside. We entered this point of interest. We had the double gap, just like we were tracking back in January. And this was the bullish case scenario. We went with the bullish case scenario because the market is doing hot. GameStop is doing hot. Yet AMC decides it wants to fall even further and volume is increasing on this sell-off, which is not something that you want to see. Nothing's invalidated yet. We're not guaranteed going to a new low. And AMC is also fighting the center of the Bollinger Band still as we speak. This was back in January with what we've been tracking with that gap. AMC, same spot, fighting the center of the Bollinger Bands on that gap. And essentially, we are still waiting for a gap higher. It just looks like it wants to scale lower. Watch support at $6.60 and then the low right around $6.52. Of course, if AMC breaks lower, volume continues to scale higher. You may see a low, but I don't think it's going to last long. I think this will be a flash down because a lot of stocks are going to squeeze coming into the new year. Also, also a very interesting trend line that I found. And the only reason I laid this out was because AMC and GameStop trade in tandem, right? GameStop is testing the macro trend line of resistance, but is AMC? AMC isn't, right? So down here, I don't know if you can see, I don't want to go all the way in on the charts. This is a test on this trend line. AMC fell very hard against it. And I'm saying that this is sort of one of the macro trend lines on AMC now, right after the reverse split, after the conversion. Touch points back here as well. Resistance when we squoze in January or right, quote unquote, squoze, shorts never covered. Gap right here, gap right here, support coming all the way to the beginning of the stock, the very first peak that it had, resistance, okay, resistance. Support, this trend line, 
carries everything. And what am I trying to get at here? When we do scale higher, I just want to show you that this is a point of resistance, this orange line that we see. The sooner, the higher we go, and it's going to be a major test on this trend line. If we don't go until December 21st, that's going to coincidentally bring us to $9.40 prior to this gap fill. If we wick above it, that could fill the gap at $10. But ultimately, we need short exempts to die down. We need the control to, you know, we need to break the algorithms. We need to break the control of market makers, all that good stuff for AMC to actually squeeze according to stock tracker before we get into gamestop and you want to pay attention to gamestop 5.8 million shares available to borrow last week 7,000 calls expired in the money compared to 24,000 puts so we lost we expected that because look at all that premium that citadel virtu all these mark makers are collecting 250,000 calls expiring out of the money more people betting bullish on amc for next week as well as the week after and take a look at this they tanked it on purpose like we said on the 14th 409 thousand short exempts if you come over and you take a look at amc's chart this is exactly the time where the algo wanted to break higher right it wicked up in this green box this is the one december 14th this wick higher all the way up to seven dollars and 23 cents and they smacked it back down as hard as possible gamestop testing the macro trend line once again what happens when we test that it breaks lower and it breaks lower fast it's also at the very top of the bollinger bands however gamestop didn't scale down like we used usually see during the previous cycles as you can see right here double bottom gap higher sell down like GameStop did and then broke down before scaling higher we didn't get that break down okay and I think the reason for that is because uh, during earnings we flashed down filled the gap right that this filled back here we filled the gap and then we didn't need to sell even further because the gap was already filled. However, taking a look at a previous cycle, which is what GameStop looks to be doing, double bottom, gap higher, slight fade down, right? And then the second scale higher, testing the macro trend line, breaking above and out of the macro trend line, as well as out of the Bollinger Bands, which I think you're going to see for GameStop. This is my outlook going forward, especially coming into the new year with the SPY getting close to all-time highs. I think GameStop has potential to enter this zone between $18 and $21.50 for a cap. And then again, if we break higher, break the algorithms, yada, 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 we can squeeze. Now, GameStop had a buy order at 4.53 p.m., so 53 minutes after market close Eastern Standard Time at $17.24 per share or 137,000 shares coming to over $2.3 million, which means somebody is purchasing GameStop touching this macro trend line that is a dangerous game to play i don't know who it is but it is a whale purchasing that many shares on gamestop which means this may be the final cycle we may get a move higher gamestop thousand shares available to borrow so basically none we won on the options chain twenty five thousand calls compared to six thousand puts expiring in the money still premium handed to market makers more people are betting bullish on next week as well for gamestop on the options chain short exempts are still way too high for gamestop they are holding a grip on this at this trend line so just wait keep an eye on it and moving on have you ever wondered what a wall street fat cat would name their crypto dark pool well here come these cocky bastards providing an answer hidden road this is what wall street fat cats name their dark pool and it's directly linked to the largest options chain in the world SIBO. not only is it directly linked but has been since day one they have had the connections and this is just more proof that retail decides to shovel into everyone's faces day in and day out exposing things on wall street Hidden Road clients will have streamlined access to cross X crossover execution only crypto electronic communication network, yada, yada, yada. SIBO as well through this partnership, cross X, yada, yada, yada. Lottery sucks. What happened to those 999 trillion swaps that were expiring on December 15th? Well, what's new, All right? They kicked the can down the road once again. I believe it's January 10th or so that something has to happen, and it's no doubt that they will kick the can even further. Another MMI failure at Citibank, a bank with about $15 trillion in outstanding derivatives, which is Citibank's second fail this year. And the first time was when it occurred during the Q1 bank run. Overall, banks are not doing hot. Before we move on, guys, make sure to get in the Discord. It helps me out. Also, I'm in there on the daily. I post my trades as soon as I take them. Everyone in there are the most amazing people. Best vibes, whether you're a beginner or advanced trader, this is the place to go. It's also the cheapest Discord on YouTube. Get in here, come press the link, watch the trailer, and join for the week starts. Also, press the link, Moomoo, 
sign up, make a deposit, earn 5.1% on your uninvested cash, as well as getting up to 15 free stocks for just opening an account and making a deposit in there. Overall, guys, both of those links are in the top of the description and pinned in the top of comments. Now, a very negative catalyst for the market. Recession is not coming, according to Jim Cramer, which is scary. If you don't know Jim Cramer, you want to do the opposite of what he says, or the opposite of what he says always happens. In this case, we'll just hope. Another sort of negative catalyst for the market is that Fed member Bostic only sees two rate cuts in 2024 and expects them to cut in the third quarter. Now, this is dangerous because say you didn't take this with a grain of salt. If this was true, right, and Bostic was correct, the market has priced in more. They've priced in early. And if there's no cut in the first two quarters, this could have a negative impact on the SPY. Buy trading at 469.33, down 0.57% on Friday, came out of the Bollinger Bands, came back down, tested the support at these two levels that we have drawn out, perfect levels drawn out on the SPY. They could not have been drawn out more perfect lately on the S&P 500. With that being said, lottery stocks, where do you see the SPY going? 477.50 to 480, which is the all-time high on the SPY coming into the brand new year. This is what I see for the last week of December, the Santa Claus rally. I also see all their plays doing extremely well, which we're going to talk about. However, be very, very careful with the SPY because with all of the dangerous economic catalyst in the background economic news what's happening with banks yada 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 right you'd assume that the market isn't going to continue to climb which is exactly what happened at the very start of 2022 spy hit an all-time high right at the end of the santa claus rally and for that entire year it sold off even further now i'm not going to say the same exact thing is going to happen but it could potentially get scary from here we're also breaking out of the Bollinger Bands, which means the SPY may need a couple days to cool off, or it may not, right? Volume increased the past two days, and it's showing that buyers and sellers getting two hammer candles with volume increasing. Buyers and sellers are trying to decide, is the S&P 500 worth going higher? Or does it need to go lower, right? There are shares being traded back and forth trying to decipher a price on the S&P 500. Again, Tesla, 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 we are still in the calls. Now they are green once again. Came up to the price target of $23.50, which I wanted to hit by late January. We hit it much, much sooner. Tesla doing amazing. It broke out of this purple macro trend line that we have drawn out. So Tesla is now in a new brand new trading range. Expect this rejection at 253.50. Scale back down to retest, right? Coming down to about 245.60 and then scaling even higher. This is what I expect for Tesla. And honestly, worst case scenario, if the SPY flashes down, Tesla has one more chance at the beginning of the week, if there's a very negative catalyst, to touch 225.50. That is my outlook on Tesla if we flash down. Full disclosure, I will most likely be still holding my calls. And if you want to know as soon as I take them or exit them, get in the Discord. Finally, this was called out in Discord. I just wanted to put it on your radar because it's actually setting up pretty nice. Tick symbol VFS VinFast Auto up 13.5% on Friday, making higher highs and higher lows. It is fighting a crucial resistance level. But above this, I see $10 if we do break above. So just keep this on your radar, as well as Mara coming into the zone that we called out. Watch for potential resistance around $18.50 and then $19 on Mara. Overall, beautiful thing to see for Mara. Bitcoin still consolidating, and I think Mara is just prepping for that next move on Bitcoin. I think it is moving sooner because Bitcoin is about to break much, much higher coming into January when they assume the ETFs will be approved and then coming into the halving, right? Finally, to close out the video, speaking of Bitcoin, BlackRock just had another meeting with the SEC last night. Could be a good thing for crypto. Overall, guys, that is what I got for you for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching or found value out of the video. Thank you guys so much for all the support that you show me. I really love you guys. I do appreciate you so much. If you want to talk with me more on the daily, get in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, as well as Instagram. And that is it. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.